Welcome back. In this video, we're going to introduce the formal definition of the component form of the cross product. Let's recall the setup that we had. To introduce the cross product in R3, we wanted to start with two vectors, x and y, and then we wanted to construct a third vector, which we called x cross y, and that vector would be in R3. And we wanted two powerful features from this operation. Feature number one was that we wanted the output vector, which we called x cross y, to be orthogonal to both x and y in R3. Second feature that we were hoping for is that this cross product would act as a measurement of perpendicularity, somehow giving us an uh, opportunity to measure how perpendicular these two vectors are. Let's go ahead and start studying the first feature by focusing on a simplified set of vectors, x and y. Uh, we're going to look at the set of vectors, which are the coordinate axes. And these have a special name, i, j, and k. As a linear algebraist, this drives me up a wall. As a calculus instructor, I will tolerate this. this. These are sometimes useful for three-dimensional geometry. Um, so you're welcome to use them, i, j, and k. And they're literally just the element, standard elementary basis vectors in the direction of the first coordinate, the direction of the second coordinate, and the direction of the third coordinate. I'm just going to do a quick example here. This is not super complex, and I think you can get your head around this pretty quickly. If you had a vector, let's call it, I don't know, negative 2, 3, and put a negative in there just to make it a little bit exotic. Of course, you could write this vector as negative 2 times 1, 0, 0. And then you could add that to 3 times 0, 1, 0. And you could finally add negative 5 times 0, 0, 1. And what we're showing in this situation is that you could write the same vector through compression as negative 2i plus 3j minus 5k. Right? This is the definition of scalar vector multiplication and vector vector addition. And these uh, i, j, and k vectors um, are kind of useful to uh, write a single vector uh, decomposed into its scalar factors. Right now, we're going to actually use these vectors to study how to create orthogonal vectors from them. So let's use the, this definition of i, j, and k. I like to put the little uh, vector hats on them to study choices for the cross product. Remember, the whole idea of the cross product was to produce a vector that was orthogonal to two inputs. So we'll start with case one. Let's look at possibilities for i cross j. And to do this, I'm going to do my very silly thing of drawing three-dimensional graphs on a two-dimensional piece of paper. I really should boot up Mathematica. However, it's hard to show my hand in Mathematica. That would be a hard thing to film. So I either have to be able to draw my hand or film it using a video recorder. Okay, so here we go. Uh, here's i, and we'll say that the positive i direction goes out that way, so it's kind of pointing away from the viewer. The positive j direction goes 
directly orthogonal and you can kind of see this happen. So here, positive i is now coming, or excuse me, negative i is coming right up towards the screen. That's what we're doing there. So negative i is coming right up towards you. Negative j is going off to the right here. Remember, the whole idea of the cross product was that we wanted to be able to generate uh, an orthogonal vector to both of these. Well, if you look at this, we have really two choices if we're going to uh, use k, so the unit vector out of this. We have the choice going upwards, so we have the choice positive k, or we have the choice going downwards, which of course would be negative k. Remember that we call this thing on the left hand side the first component of the cross product. And then we call the thing on the right hand side the second component. And I'll write that this way just to save a little bit of space. And we're going to make a deal. We have already introduced the right hand rule and we're going to reuse it this way so that there's no ambiguity of which of these two choices we should use. We're going to point our index finger along the first component. And then we'll point our middle finger along the second component. The direction of our thumb via the right hand rule will then become the direction of the cross product. So in this case what we see is if I do this right hand rule idea, here's the first component, I take one pointed away from me, I take J point along excuse me, I take my middle finger pointed along the second vector and the second component. K is going to be the cross product, so we're going to say that this thing is actually equal to K, which is going to come directly orthogonal to both of these things. So here is the K vector, and it's orthogonal to both I and J, and you can see that I'm doing a pretty bad job of drawing that. Right? And we're going to just assume this to be true for when we take cross products. Let's take a look at the next case. So we'll always come back to that orientation. So case one was I cross J. Maybe we take instead of I cross J, let's take J cross K. Okay, here we go. We said that positive J was out into this direction. So there's positive J. And then we said positive K was coming directly orthogonal to this. All right, so here's the orthogonal relationship. And then the whole idea was we were going to take our index finger and point it along the J. So here's the index finger pointed along the J. We were going to take our middle finger pointed along the K, okay, and then the direction of my thumb now is the direction of the cross product. Well, notice that the direction of my thumb is along I. It's hard to draw that. Of course, I is moving away from the viewer into the page. I'll go ahead and just do the same kind of skewed drawing that I did in the one above. Here we said that this was I. And notice it was positive I based on this orientation. M middle finger, uh, index finger, middle finger goes this way. Cross product is in the direction of the thumb. So this is indeed a positive I. And we said this was case two, right? Okay, so we've got case one was I cross J. Case two was J cross K. We've got one last case to go, and this is just to kind of focus on the easiest cases first. The last case, which was case three, we haven't considered what happens when we do I cross K yet. Okay, well let's take a look. I came out this way, this was the positive I. K was directly orthogonal to that in the upward direction there. 
And let's go ahead and show that that's orthogonal by drawing that right angle. And remember what we did in the right hand rule, we, sit, we point our index finger along the uh, eye direction. So my index finger is going to be going down away from the viewer. My middle finger is along the second component, so in this case it's K. And then the direction of my thumb is the cross product. Well, the direction of my thumb goes out this way. Do you see something really interesting? The direction of my thumb is in the negative J direction. So if we assume this convention, it must be true that when I take I cross K, I actually get a negative J, not a positive J. Positive J would be off in this direction. And I want to make a note here. If we assume this convention, which we're I might call it the right hand rule, convention, and we're going to use this in just a second when we talk about a harder vectors that are not the standard unit vectors. The cross product operation will not be commutative. or symmetrics. I like to call it anti-symmetric because there's a negative that comes out. And the way to think about this is I cross K. That's, of course, not an X vector. That's a cross product. So here, I cross K. We just showed, let's do it again, I moving away from you, K going upwards. That's a negative J because of the orientation of our axis. And then let's take a look what happens when we switch the order of the components. So what did we say? What was the rule? We said the rule was that we point our middle finger along the first, excuse me, our index finger along the first component, our middle finger along the second component, and then the direction of our thumb is the direction of the cross product. We'll take this, look at this. K, I, those are the components, positive J. Holy mathematics operation. Look at that. They're actually opposites of each other. And we're going to see this in a bit when we switch the order of the cross product. We get a negative sign out. This is non-commutative. Commutative means you can switch it with no cost. This thing is not, it's, it, I like to call it anti-symmetric, <laughs> because when you do you try to do symmetry, you have to get a negative out. But it kind of makes sense in this from the standpoint of what we said earlier today. Remember, any time that we had two vectors, we call these i and j, we had two choices for the cross product. We had the one that comes up out of the up this way in the positive direction. And then we also could say if we want it to be orthogonal, it could go down that way. And then we made a, 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 a pact, a decision together to be a convention that we would take our index finger along the first coordinate, middle finger along the second component, the direction of our thumb would be the third component, which means that if I switch, boom, it's kind of hard to see this, that I get the opposite direction. So I take care of both with that. All right. So th this was kind of interesting. I'm going to go ahead and recap this quickly for you. We just said the following. So this is a recap. We are going to assume a convention where we use our index finger along the first component, middle finger along the second component, and then the direction of our thumb, which is orthogonal to both of them, will be the cross product. And what we saw there was that um, this resulted in the following outputs. That if I had I cross J, I would get positive K. I cross K, I get negative J. And then J cross K, I get positive I. 
right, this takes the care of the first problem, which is how do you cross two vectors to get a third vector orthogonal to both of them? In the next video, we'll address the second problem, which is how do you measure perpendicularity and use that to construct a general cross product? See you in the next video.